All right, everybody, this is Eternal Blade here, and welcome back. Uh, today, we will be working on modeling the little lamp portion right here. So, we're just going to do the little lampshade, the lamp stock, and um, probably call it a day. So, get your reference image off to your side here and zoom in on your lamp. All right, we're just going to take these couple pieces here and isolate selection. Press Z on your object to zoom in around it. And uh, we'll just use what we've created so far. So, what we're going to do actually is select let me think here, everything and then deselect the little top portions. Actually, we do select the sides as ooh, okay. Uh, let's fix this first here. Um, so polygon mode and then you want to um, create. As you can see we're just missing the actual uh, geometry here so it didn't work so well. There we go. And the reason I'm doing every other one is because we can use the cap tool to uh, finish the rest off a little easier. Missed it. Actually, gotta wait for those crosshairs to change, which is eh, a bit problematic, but nothing you can't work around. Alright. This will probably be a shorter lesson right here, just because none of this stuff is terribly complex. It's just a matter of getting the Geometry, right? I don't want to insert a vertex. Come on. Cap. Yeah, there's probably an easier way of doing this. In fact, I already thought of one. I could have just extruded the edge down here and uh, welded them. But whatever. I guess you, uh, you learn. The main goal here is to just always learn. I've been doing this for years, and I take occasional breaks, even some, you know, six or twelve months, but uh, I always come back to it. It's just too much fun to uh, ignore. Alright, I'm just holding down Alt to um, deselect all these things, alright? Now what we're going to do is inset. Well, we don't want to inset too much, we're just trying to make a little, uh, little seam, sort of. Okay, and then extrude. We're going to actually extrude on the local model, we're going to go inward just a bit, just to give it a bit more thickness on the outer edges. Alright, uh, that looks pretty good, if I had to say so. Um, now select the entire thing here, and let's just scale it in just a bit. Kind of flatten it out. It does distort it a little bit, but it um, eh, shouldn't be anything to worry about. All right, uh, next what we can do is, let's see here. I want to go in select mode. Let's look at the entire outside edge, okay? And let's chamfer this. All right, we're gonna chamfer very much. All right, now select like the entire inside edge. If it'll let you. Perhaps it won't. So let's try this edge. No? Maybe it doesn't want to be selected today. All right, well, let's just do a actually, turbo smooth. All right, and then we'll just keep editing away until we get what we need. All right, so I guess we'll just select some stuff by hand here. Sometimes that's just what you have to do. All right. No, there's no harm in a little manual labor now and then. And you know, someone's probably yelling at me saying, hey, hey, you can do it this way. Well, I probably could, but I don't know that way. And it is 8.35 at night. I have to go to work tomorrow, so I'm going to do it whatever way I can. So I'll just click away here. Again, I'm just holding uh, control to click. So 
There's not much to it. If you don't click anything, just press Control Z because you guaranteed selected something you did not want to select. 100% of the time. Okay. And now let's uh, see if I throw that once. Chamfer it. I'm just trying to get uh, the edge there. So select, grow it once, and then deselect top and bottom. Now let's see what we have. We should have a hard uh, corner on the top, and we do. Excellent. All right, let's uh, work on the inside of it. So I'm going to say the easiest way for this is probably. Did that work? Ah, it actually worked. Okay, so Control click the edges here. And now all we have to do is deselect um, these little inside edges. So we're just going to hold Alt and go all the way around. I'm surprised that worked. They added that feature, uh, I don't know, probably two releases back, maybe, where you could control, double click. And it would try to select a loop, and oops, I don't want that one. I've used it uh, for a while, but it seems like it doesn't always work. And I don't know why. Now, selecting a loop doesn't always work either. So maybe it's just sort of a, a hit or miss thing. But it does seem strange. So when it works, it works really well. And when it doesn't work, I feel like. I want to attack a small furry animal. All right, so chamfer, bam, it is chamfered. And now, if we get out and go to turbo smooth, I feel like we missed a corner. Maybe what are we missing here? One of these corners. These corners are messed up, and I don't know why they're messed up. Ah, well, now I know why. There happens to be a line right here, which needs some chamfer love. All right, so what we can do, we can chamfer it. And then, fairly certain that'll break it though. No, that didn't break it. That's nice. What I should really do, and what I'd recommend you guys doing too, is just increase your unit size. This is a nightmare right now because um, I'm at such a small unit size. Basically, everything I do, it's thinking like I can't even really zoom in too much because Max will sort of bug out on me. All right. All right, so we got. That corner, that corner, something's still up with this corner. Perhaps I forgot something on the bottom. Interesting. It didn't even uh, didn't even chamfer this for some reason. I wonder why that is. Okay, well that solves that problem, and maybe this one's not chamfered either. Great. Go away. And chamfer. Okay, I mean it's all right if we have you know the back a little less chamfered than the front. If we do chamfer though, let's actually attempt to do the full chamfer. Okay, and let's look over here and see what we've got. And I'm gonna have to scale everything up here. This is getting pretty outlandish. All right, we'll get this last little bit. Oops, not that one. That's the problem. We can't even really zoom in. All right, there we go. We got it. And chamfer. Okay. Now that is an interesting little joint we have there. We should really fix that. That's going to cause us some problems. So let's just 
target world there's some points here and actually we will delete this and probably that and even that let's see if that's what we want to do target weld well that to that that to that there we go and we need to delete that face and create some geometry to fill in the void there we go so I believe that will be not a bad uh, little shade for our thingamajig and we can probably oh, we won't really see it and I don't know how it connects I'm gonna guess that there are uh, some cylinders we're just gonna use auto grid here just right off the top some little cylinders here and press A for angle snap rotate 90 degrees and then they're probably, I don't know, maybe here. And we will just bring down the height. Okay. Again, you want it to be almost touching. Well, actually, you do want it to touch, but you don't want it to go through. Okay. And then we'll just drag that. Right until it goes through over there. And I think we can probably leave it at that. All right, now let's work on um, the main pole. Let me see. I think we have a twist modifier here we can use to a decent effect. And we need to have a few more height segments to make this work. Okay, and then actually let's do the twist for now. Oops, just the modifier, please. And we need to select every other um hmm, what do we want to do? First convert to visual poly. I think we want to select every other polygon I think that'll be our best bet and yeah I do see this is sort of oval shaped and that's fine it'll just give it a different uh, different element okay and then we're going to want to extrude this um, about that far and extrude again this will be a tiny little extrude this is basically the equivalent of a chamfer all right and then we will do a turbo smooth and try two iterations see how it looks it's not bad okay um, on the top though we will need to Grow, grow, and deselect all these things, extrude. Okay, that'll just make the top nice and happy. And then we'll just do that, extrude by the same amount. Okay. Now our turbo smooth should look good. And now what we can do is apply the twist modifier. And we'll give it a nice little, little spiral effect. And so that'll kind of give us the curved uh, spiral effect that the post has. And we can actually here, we'll just, just to make, make myself happy, we will scale it so it's round. Okay. Good deal. All right, now what we can do is simply uh, get this sphere, and this is just literally a sphere. 
and get a cylinder. And we'll just build the cylinder directly on top of here and just shwoop, right into the ball. So go into your front viewport here, F3, and just make sure that your cylinders about as aligned as it can be. There we go, and then get your ball, make sure it's aligned. Alright, and then just bring this entire thing down a bit. Now, what we didn't do, and what we really should do, is figure out where the light bulb is going to be. And actually, my bet is the light bulb is sort of what am I doing? I'm moving a twist. I want to move the entire object down. So I'm guessing the light bulb is somewhere in here. So let's just um, go in a cylinder here. I'm just going to make quick light bulb shape. So we're just going to do it with bevel, as is my probably favorite tool. So just kind of out. And now I'm making the little bulb section. Alright, and kind of come back in. And we're done. And the way these things usually work um, is Let's go to shapes, line, and then the front viewport here. And we're actually going to uh, draw over here. It's going to kind of kind of come out. You'll see what I'm making in a second here. It's like a little thing that goes over the light bulb. Okay. And let's do a... I don't want to extrude. I want to right, make this spline renderable. In the render and in the viewport. Alright. So do a symmetry. And make sure you drag the symmetry over. Uh, just the symmetry. And then we need to go on the flip that. go. That's good. And this will sink right in here and try to cover the light bulb. And we can squish a little bit so it fits. There we go. Alright, and let's go to the top viewport and just align it. This basically just allows the uh, light bulb to sort of hold on to something. There we go. And actually, I wonder. Usually, these things are sort of like connected up here. And I think I'm going to do the same. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we have going on here? Let's uh, go right back to the editable poly. Delete whatever junk is going on there all of the junk and uh, let's just get this edge and drag it over select this edge drag it over and then select both of those edges but not their counterparts and we will bridge and it sort of work I don't know why it didn't just go across. Let's help it along a little bit. Ooh. All right, this one is one bridge. Why don't you want a bridge there? You don't have pop. Ah. All right, so bridge. There we go. And now, if we oops. 
we select these, now we should be good for bridge. All right, there we go. Perfect. And let's simply copy this ball, drag it down, because that's what they usually have is just a smaller ball here. That's sort of where it connects. Okay. I'll grab this and just bring it in. Watch out. Uh, grab this and bring it in. There we go. Perfect. And let's actually rotate this 90 degrees. All right. Because there's usually something supporting the front as well. And just try to center it up as best you can. And then drag it back in. Okay, and drag the back out. There we go. Perfect. And next, let's just. Man, that is pretty brutal to zoom here. Extrude this by a little bit. Alright, that should be enough. And turbo smooth this thing just to give us a little bit more light bulb shape. And we can all right, go here and adjust some things. All right, so let's make this top a little more rounded. Okay. And bring it up a bit too. Okay, there we go. Now we've got our light bulb. And what we can also do is just a little bring this sphere down here. Okay. R, we're just gonna scale it out a bit and drag it down just so you can get like a little um a little connection piece on your light bulb. What's this this must be the light bulb so this is a little bit off center there we go all right so we've basically built what amounts to a little light bulb stand nothing nothing super fancy but it will do its job and i think what i want to do is we copy those there so we get some cool shadows going on and it probably makes sense that it would be fairly stable, especially if it's kind of like open ocean or something. Uh, that's what you'd want. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna say that will be done for now. Again, it doesn't take much. And a lot of this will be um, you know, texturing it to get the light right, and we'll, we'll work on that later on. So let's uh, group this. Group as lamp. Let's just do that gray material. Okay. Then we will end isolation mode here. And there we go. Let's go to our camera mode. Now we have another um, of our little things done. So it was a quite quite a little quick part. We just learned how to use the sort of the twist feature, you know, create a basic lamp shade and whatnot. Um, and actually, let me just adjust this a little bit. I'm not a fan. Let's just open the group here. And this is definitely too tall. So we're just going to bring this down and bring the ball down. And let's close the group. There we go. Much better. All right. Uh, so I think with that, we will. I really hope I'm recording this. So we will uh, end this tutorial, and I will... Oh, good, I am recording it. That would be really problematic. Sometimes it really happens that way. But, so, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned a little bit of something about creating a lamp. So I will see you in the next one.